So the most likely consequence is that expression is going to go down because the most likely consequence of changing the sequence of a regulatory binding site is that the protein is not going to bind there anymore. It won't recognize the site because the sequence has changed, and that's going to interfere with activation of transcription. Now, I want to show you a few more examples of the consequences of regulatory mutations, but this is a different kind of regulatory mutation. These are mutations that cause one kind of tissue to develop into a different kind of tissue. So these are developmental mutations that occur when the embryo is developing or when a part of the organism is developing. And the examples I'm going to show you are from plants, but similar mutations occur in animals as well. Um, we like these mutations in plants because they often make the flowers look prettier. Um, but we consider them serious problems, usually when they happen in animals. So here's a normal poppy, and you can see it has the typical poppy structure. It's got simple petals, and then in the center of the plant, it's got the stamens that produce the pollen. Here's a mutant poppy. It doesn't have any stamens at all. Instead, the stamens have grown into little petals, and it's got a very pretty poppy but it's unable to reproduce because it doesn't have state doesn't make pollen. Here are some daffodils with similar problems. Here's a normal daffodil. You can see the reproductive structures inside the horn part of the daffodil. Here's another kind of daffodil that you can grow in your garden. It doesn't have any reproductive structures at all. No pistils and no stamen. All those parts have developed as flowers. And here's another daffodil that instead is making a whole bunch of little horns that look like they don't have any reproductive structures in them, but they look very pretty. Um, here's one last one. This is a camellia. Again, you can see all the stamens that should have pollen and the pistils in the center, and they're completely missing in the flower. Now, the red streaks are from a different mutation, probably another transposable element insertion. So what we've done, we've talked about how proteins regulate gene expression, that is, how they regulate the transcriptional activity of RNA polymerase by telling it when to use which promoters. And we talked about what changes when the genes for these proteins change. Um, sometimes there'll be maybe no production of the proteins that are regulated by these genes. Sometimes there'll be a protein product in a new location or a new condition. And sometimes abnormal developmental pathways may be activated, um, in the case of flowers, producing all sorts of beautiful flowers. Coming up next, as I said, we're going to talk about how the activity of proteins is regulated, how once the protein is made, how do we control what it does? I hope to see you there.